wise men, called the three magi of the east, came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? The word magus is of Persian origin. Legends and tradition assign the meaning of the kings of the Orient to the Zoroastrians, men versed in a prophecy of Zoroaster, emissary of Ahura Mazda. A book produced at the beginning of the 20th century by A.V. Williams Jackson from Columbia University posed that a majority of the church fathers regard Persia as the native country of the wise men without expressly locating their place of origin. Marco Polo, however, mentions three places in Persia from which these kings were supposed to have come, with special emphasis on the castle of the fire worshippers. Jackson believes the reference Marco makes to Kassan or Kashan establishes the location of these learned people perhaps 20 miles south on the Kashan Ishfahan Road. Now a deserted place where a settlement of fire worshippers gathered adjacent to the ruins of a magnificent caravanserai. It is far from certain whether Kashan figured in the biblical account of the discovery of Jesus, but his candidacy reflects the ancient mystique of this city oasis on the desert, the Maran Job. Strewn with older towns and mounds dating back several millennia BC. Kashan's antiquity is attested by the mud brick back streets and neighborhoods and a cluster of palatial homes. City nightlife obscures the modesty of Kashan's past, however. The virtually undiminished historical bazaar, Kimche Amin Odole, features a structure designed to naturally regulate temperature and sunlight and ventilate the interior. Wandering within the cavern-like market, I discovered what I dubbed the Green Mosque, presiding over a back alley. The courtyard was nearly deserted, but bathed in emerald-colored lights. I learned that green is a popular color in Iran and symbolizes, according to one account, gardens, nature, heaven, and sanctity. Green also purportedly was the favorite color of the Prophet Muhammad. In the 12th century, green was chosen as a dynastic color by the Shiite Fatimids, in contrast to the black used by the Sunnite Abbasids. Shah Abbas I designed the central gardens, the Thin Garden, as a classical Persian vision of paradise. The World Heritage Site, commonly referred to as Bage Thin Gardens and Bath, is one of Central Asia's grander picnic grounds for royalty and citizens. Nearby springs quench a variety of flora, including a healthy dose of cypress trees. It was in a small enclave adjacent to the garden where Mirza Taghi Khan, known as Amir Kabir, Chancellor of Iran's king, in 1852 was assassinated. The Queen Mother and his executioner, Ali Khan Faresh Bashi, had convinced the king that a Russian plot to protect Amir Kabir was afoot. Amir Kabir was murdered in Kashan on January 10, 1852. No ruler or ruler's servant of this nation could ever be entirely comfortable or safe from plot. A verse composed by the renowned poet Hafez reads, The Sultan's crown with priceless jewels set encircles fear of death and constant dread. It is a headdress much desired. And yet, are you sure it's worth the danger to the head? Kashan today has a brooding nature, perhaps remembering past upheavals and intrigues. During my brief stop in Kashan in 2017, I reside in the Sarai Amarihab Boutique Hotel 
and restored Tabatabai House, recently renovated and repurposed to become one of the luxury hotels in the city. Courtyards, wall paintings, and mirrors with elegant stained glass windows greet you at every turn. More than once I had to pause and backtrack in search of my assigned room within the wall labyrinth. In one random ascent of some steps, I reached a rooftop and experienced there an eerie silence and vague nostalgic sensation as though I had regressed in time. A soft, partially unveiled September moon and a cooler desert breeze. That night was ushering in Ashura in Muharram. The Tabatabai property, comprised of 40 rooms, three wind towers, four yards, is one of several elaborate merchant-owned mansions in Isfahan province. Many having been originally financed on the backs of travelers paying tolls along the Silk Road. The property has secret rooms and passageways, including one leading to a darkness above, positioned in the wall of my lavishly tiled bathroom, featuring two showers and a deep jacuzzi capacity traditional tub. As my fellow travelers can attest, the woodwork, paintings, carvings, and decorative art, much of which are still now being delicately retouched and updated, conspire with fragrant gardens, hammams, or Turkish baths, and pools to offer a visitor a moment of timeless relaxation. Before leaving Old Kashan on the road to Yazd, one of the finest examples of much more recent 18th to 19th century Islamic architecture beckons from the city center. The mosque known as Aqa Bazorik points in many places to a different heaven than the one championed by Zoroaster. The building's motif is spare but beautiful as color of the finished core is juxtaposed against bare brick as though mimicking an unfinished picture puzzle. Many famous artists of this area contributed to the wall art of this complex that serves as both a mosque and a theological seminary. Kashan is the edge of contemporary history. Traveling southeast and west from here, amidst the Carcass mountain range, a traveler confronts the more ancient and complicated origins of the empire, couched in the annals collected from biblical times. South of the Carcass mountain subgroup, and at the heart of the Persian sun world, an ancient redoubt named Ardistan nurtures a prominent landmark that features fire worshiper origins. Ardistan is located in the proximity of the Dasht e Kavir, another desert. Its inhabitants had to face extreme heat for most of the year and lack of water. Water, though, was available at mountain springs and long tunnels called Konats carry it to the town into domed storage structures, limiting its evaporation. Natural air conditioning towers catch the wind and push air downwards, reducing its temperature. Nearby Shabastans are cool temperature moderated underground halls built at the Quanat level. In Artistan, a large water storage complex resides adjacent to one of the most exquisite older religious centers of Iran, its Jame Friday Mosque. The primeval mosque was built in the 10th century to fit Islamic sensibilities and has served four epochs of congregations. The particularly compelling structure displays some of the refinement of the unfinished brickwork patterns that in modern times are being restored with tiles and artwork reminiscent of the original intention of these exquisite buildings. The South Sanctuary, with the main mirab, a prayer niche, is beneath a two-shelled brick dome dated from 1158 to 1160. Patterns here are inscribed in brick and stucco, not tiles. Its vault features whirling arabesques made of brick and whitewash. The main mirab is ranked among the best achievements of Seljuk Turk plaster art. It has rows of inscriptions in Kufic, Nask, and Talig. 
carved on a background of stucco flowers and arabesques. As a note of interest, the Seljuks were followers of Sunni Islam, not Shia, and these Turks sponsored the construction of many large mosques and madrasas, or colleges for Islamic study, while occupying Iran. Another magnificent mosque in the nearby town of Nain sits atop a quanat and water pool and dark chambers and passages that once shielded congregants and worshippers, perhaps even pre-Islamic Zoroastrians, from the torrid climate. The somber, cool chambers below ground hold many secrets and tales, I have no doubt. Silent jugs bear witness to many visitors, even as they once also held water and or ceremonial ointments for use over many centuries. While there is much else going on in this region of northern Esfahan province, probably the most notable takeaway is the sheer audacity of Persian endeavors in this challenging rocky land over thousands of years. The Darius's and his minions of Zoroastrian believers built monuments to heaven, 